Hey guys, today we have a brand new Minimates review. Today we have the SpongeBob SquarePants Minimates Series 1, SpongeBob and Sandy. So, this is surprising. A couple months back, DST announced that they were doing SpongeBob of all licenses. I guess that the Ninja Turtle Minimates were that much of a success that Nickelodeon was like, here you go. It's a little crazy though, because like, I grew up with Spongebob when I was really young, and seeing them as Minimates is kind of freaky. Yeah, anyway, um, Series 1, we've got Spongebob and Sandy. Cool. Packaging-wise, it's actually pretty nice. It's, I think it's supposed to look like his house, the pineapple, but it's yellow instead of being like orangish. Eh? You've got, like, a window into the ocean in the back. Eight and up, Minimates, Spongebob Squarepants. Spongebob, Sandy. They're very happy. On the back of the box, we have the roster. Being Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and then a couple characters... Um, Grandpappy Redbeard, and two Perch Perkins, which I remember being, like, minor interviewers in some of the episodes, but, like, I didn't know that character had a name. So, you can also mix and match parts to create new species. I don't know exactly what you'd make. Spongebob, this is really weird. Anyway, I would review these, but I think Viacom might actually take this video down if I say anything bad about these figures. Let's begin. SpongeBob. SpongeBob SquarePants lives in a pineapple under the sea in Bikini Bottom. He works as a fry cook at the Krusty Krab and loves superheroes, blowing bubbles, and having fun with friends. Sandy. Sandy Cheeks is a squirrel from Texas, who now lives in a tree under a dome in Bikini Bottom. She wears a diving suit when she leaves her dome, and is highly skilled at science, rodeos, and karate. First up, we have Spongebob. So, here we have him, the main character of the series, Spongebob, as a mini-mate. This is weird. So, when I saw that they were doing Spongebob, my first thought was... Why and how. This is how. I'm going to be honest, I thought the figure looked pretty bad when the prototypes first were revealed, and it was like, ugh, what do those look like? But now that I have Spongebob in hand, he looks a lot better. And he's still very weird, but, I mean, it works somehow. So you can see Spongebob has almost... Well, an entirely new body. He's got the sponge body with a big, stupid grin. I mean, it's just a SpongeBob face. It actually looks like they just took, like, a generic character art and just slapped it on. Because this isn't even, like, Minimate styled. It's pretty weird. He's got his little tie, which is pretty nice. You can see he's very loose on his crotch. We'll get to that in a minute when we get go over the construction. Little pants. You can see he has socks with shoes, obviously. What's really weird is that they've used arms for his legs. Now, we've had that before with Jack and Daxter. From the Sony Minimates, Daxter had legs that were arms. But you can see SpongeBob has a foot at the bottom, and it's like molded with it. So, it's all one piece. Pretty weird. And he's got the short person arm set. I mean, we've seen this with, like, Carl Grimes. And the kids from Peter Pan. You can see on the back there's some more sponge detailing. Now there's a hole in his head. It is the standard Minimate hole. But there's nothing to put in it. Yet. So, Spongebob is pretty strange. Like, here he is. He's almost completely hollow. This is weird. And then 
his legs, his whole entire crotch is just an extra piece, which is also pretty weird. And because of that, this causes there to be an extra bit of space between the crotch piece itself and Spongebob, so he's very loose. I mean, like, he comes off very easily, and is very fragile. Other than that, very weird Minimate, but he's pretty well done. And somehow, he still has quite a bit of articulation. Now, he obviously can't move at the hands or the feet, but I mean, he still swivels, still can do leg movement. The biggest problem with Spongebob, though, his accessory. He has a display stand. That's it. So, all he has is a display stand. I'm worried this might turn into Ninja Turtles, where it's like, not a lot of accessories with the first wave, but we still get, like, all the main characters. And then the second wave, we still get the same four turtles but they come with a ton of accessories that make me want to buy them. Because I mean Spongebob's missing like his fry cook hat, a spatula, Gary. So, I mean I think there's only like three accessories in total in this whole wave. So, just as a heads up, if you buy these, you're not gonna get a lot. Overall, Spongebob has an interesting design and definitely shows how far the Minimate standard can go. Next up we have Sandy. So here we have Sandy Cheeks. Because, yeah, for some reason. Now this is a pretty good looking Minimate. It looks actually like functionally a Minimate. I mean, you can see the Minimate essence in it. But it has a couple of problems that really holds it back from being anything too great. And we'll get to that in a minute. First off, detail-wise, it actually looks really nice. You can see she's in her dive suit. She's got a little acorn on it, the zipper. She's actually got detailing down her arms, but she also has the, the small arm. So, no hand movement. Disappointing. I don't know why they went with that. A lot of the Minimates actually have these kinds of arms in the SpongeBob wave, which baffles me. She has all new legs, which are the same going down, but then they're actually shortened to show off boots, which mean do look nice, but they make her look a little shorter, and I think that's probably why they gave her the short arms, is probably just because they didn't want her arms being too long, but it still looks a little weird. She's got her tail, which looks quite nice. There's no detailing underneath her, which is quite disappointing. And yeah, simple design, but then we get up to the face. You can see she has her little fishbowl helmet. Even has the little flower petal on it, which looks nice. And it's very cool. But this leads into the biggest problem with this figure. Her mask, like... It comes off so easily, like... Or even just... Like, there'll be times where I just kind of, like, pick it up and just, like, the sheer force of me, like, grabbing it by the torso and then grabbing the rest of the figure causes the helmet to just pop off, like, like that. So it's just flopping around all the time, which is incredibly disappointing. But then you can see her face underneath is all right. It's very stout looking, like, reminds me of a cake almost. But I mean, it's not too bad. But I mean, it's not too bad. You can actually see her face and it looks pretty cool. She has her ears. It looks nice. It's just, if this helmet didn't keep falling off when I put it on, cause like, listen, there's no like clicking. I feel like it's just a well-constructed figure. Just the helmet really, really drags. Anyway, articulation wise, she can do everything that you would expect her to. Her hands can't move. But her legs are kind of prohibited. You can move them out, though. But no feet movement. And no head movement because of her helmet. But if you took it off, yeah, I mean, she can move. And accessory-wise, even more disappointing. One display stand. 
I mean, such a missed potential. They could have... Okay. Listen, guys. If you do another set, I want you to do another Sandy, but you gotta do her with normal arms so that you can give her the giant karate hands. Yeah, I want the giant karate hands. That'd be so cool. You know, I could actually say that. We'll probably get the exact same Sandy soon. Just... Her hands are actually the normal way to make hands, and she'll come with the karate stuff, which would be nice. Overall, Sandy looks nice, but has a lot of things wrong with her. So, overall, that was the SpongeBob SquarePants Mini Mate Series 1, SpongeBob and Sandy. This is an alright two-pack, I'm gonna be honest. There's a lot of things wrong with these figures. I think they're well-constructed, and I have a lot of nostalgia towards that show from when I was growing up, so I'm glad I picked them up. But that does not excuse the lack of accessories, and I'm not a big fan of how Sandy is constructed. I feel like if they gave her normal legs and just had her boots be slip-on, and then gave her normal hands... I mean, yeah, she'd be taller than Spongebob, but, I mean, I think it would look a bit better. It wouldn't be too scale exactly, but then she could do quite a bit more. And if they ever made karate hands, you could give her the karate hands. I mean, missed opportunity. But we'll probably see accessories like that soon. I'm also disappointed Spongebob did not come with a Krusty Krab hat, but we'll probably see that soon in like a Krusty Krab box set. So, is it my favorite? Eh, it's alright. Like I said, I mean it's good, they're fun, but they're not anything great. There's a lot of problems with it, and I hope that in the next couple sets, if they do more, that they can iron out the problems. But that's just my opinion. And anyway, I actually would like to know if you guys would like to see more of these SpongeBob Minimates. I'm not too sure if I want to keep reviewing these. I might do the Squidward and Patrick set. Um, Mr. Krabs and that Perch Perkins figure, maybe. I'm only familiar with Krabs, though. And then the variant set, um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know who that is. Total missed opportunity for not having it be that robot Krabs. But that's just my opinion. If you guys want to see more of the SpongeBob stuff, or if you think I can just go ahead and skip reviewing the other figures, I've got them still in box, so... So just let me know in the comments section, and... If there's enough demand to see the other Spongebob figures, then in the coming weeks I will review them as well. But anyway, did you like the video? Well then rate, comment, subscribe, and like, and I'll see you later.